so this is a really nice image generated by stable diffusion and it's been chucked up online uh, and this here is basically what I've been able to achieve locally like 90% of the time so in this tutorial we're gonna go step by step through how to actually make a nice image um, using this Krita plugin uh, yeah so it's this uh, program here it's completely free you can install it on any operating system um, and we're also going to see if we can use some of the more advanced illustration features. So we're not just going to like find a good prompt, generate an image. We'll generate an image and then we'll screw around with that image and then like regenerate bits of it and stuff until we get something that's quite nice. And hopefully, having watched this, you will be able to predictably make good images using Stable Diffusion. That's the idea. We're going to use a particular plugin, which is made by this guy, who I'm not going to try to pronounce his name. Um, and we'll go through installing that, that plugin in a different video, but for now, um, we'll just, it's called the SD plugin, and that's mainly what's gonna, what we're gonna use. Completely new project, we're gonna do 512 by 512 canvas, because that's what the machine learning model likes. So this prompt here, I actually went through a lot of iterations to, to get that prompt. So a lot of the prompts that I start with, um, I generate like 10 images and they're all terrible, and then I change the prompt and I keep going until the images look sort of okay. Uh, and I also even started off by stealing a lot of the prompt from this guy here, who, you know, his video is really good. This is a pretty reliable prompt, but of course, maybe we can even make it a bit better. So I'm gonna start by generating like six images with that prompt, and they'll all be 512 by 512, and I think 20 steps is fine. Maybe we'll add, make him maybe 35 steps. That seems like a, like a good parameter. To be honest, I don't understand most of these parameters, and I don't think you need to either. Batch count is the number of images, and steps is the number of, the amount of, um, every step is like a new sort of layer being added to the image, and a new like pass that the machine learning model does to try to make the image better. So more layers is like more work the machine learning model puts in basically. And then I'll just click apply. And now this is gonna sort of freeze, and in the back end we'll be able to see it running. Okay, so they all completed. Um, it was pretty quick, it took like two minutes or so. And let's have a look at them. So this one looks okay. Um, I kind of wanted more of like a like a beach scape. I don't really want to focus on the people so much. So I don't. This is probably not a good one for us. Let's see. This one's a bit better, but as you can see, it's kind of incoherent. This one's interesting. In fact, like I like both of these images independently, but I don't like the fact that they're both stacked on top of each other. That kind of sucks. This one is not usable. This one is also not usable. That one again, kind of not usable at all. Okay, so so far we don't really have anything that good. I wanted something that looked a bit like like this. I think this is pretty cool. I'm gonna generate a bunch more because to me none of these are like that good. So let's let's generate eight this time. Um, again with a random seed. Uh, maybe we'll just do forty steps. Maybe that'll help us out a little bit. Um, and the thing is, I, I saw that a lot of these had like like people in them. And I don't really want the people to be the focus. I want it to be more of a landscape. Okay, so I've just added a few more qualifiers here. Um, lonely, quiet, empty, and hopefully that will mean that we see less people and more landscape next time. Okay, and we're back. So let's see what we've, what we've been given. Okay, see this one's kind of nice. I wanted a beach in the foreground, but maybe we can work with that. There we go. See this, this we can work with, I think. This is very similar to what we wanted. So this is like a, a possible one. This is also this is also good. If we just get rid of this nonsense, I think we're actually um, yeah. This is really nice actually. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and deleted like pretty much all the ones except the ones that we might possibly use. Um, and I guess the one cool thing that happened there was we sort of created this iterative cycle where we generated a bunch of images, had a look at them, found out that a lot of them were kind of too noisy and too crowded, and so we changed the prompt to make it a bit less crowded and noisy. And we got some images that were actually, you know, a lot closer to what we wanted. I think, to be honest, I like this. This is the nicest image to me, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna run with this. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of this thing up here. I don't know what that is, but we don't want it. Okay, so for this, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take another bit of the sky that's already here, and we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna copy it over. So here we go, and then we can just, um, okay, so 
make sure to feather the selection. That's always what we do. Make it like, I don't know, five, it seems reasonable. Okay, copy paste. And then just move it over. <laughs> okay, cool. And now, uh, no one is the wiser. <laughs> it's completely gone. So I guess that's sort of the benefit of running this inside a, an actual illustration program is you can, you can use normal illustration functions. And yeah, so that's good, that's nice. Um, I'm kind of happy with this, to be honest. I think this is pretty good, but let's say what we also want to do is maybe want to add like, um, I don't know, we want to add a little, a little person walking along the beach. Okay, so now what we're going to try to do is we're just going to try to add a small child somewhere in this scene. You know, someone like standing on the beach, like looking out into the waves. And I think having done that, we'll have achieved a reasonably good image. Now, the best way I know how to do this is you use this image to image function, which takes your original input and then converts it into some other kind of output. Um, and, to, you know, you can be really strict and say it has to look almost identical, or you can be really uh, loose and say, take some elements from this scene and then go wild. Um, and so the plan is we're just going to, we're going to draw like a little, a little human sitting here on the beach. And we're going to see, we're going to ask basically this, this program to go ahead and giblify that human. So zoom in with just like a basic, very basic brush of some kind. And I am very, very bad at drawing, but let's say, you know, it's someone who's wearing like a gray, some kind of a gray coat or something. about this large okay here we go a small child standing staring out to sea uh, and you know what you know what because this is a Ghibli this is Ghibli of course let's give them like a red scarf or something okay so we've got a little person and we're really careful to put it on a different layer than the actual image itself so that's nice and now we'll try to get it to draw that a small child staring out to sea um, blah 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 we'll do six different attempts and we'll keep the denoising strength quite low. So the denoising strength, if it's lower, it means that the AI has to stick really close to the image you give it, and it won't be allowed to deviate too much. Whereas if it's high, it'll be allowed to go crazy. So we'll try that. And hopefully one of these variations will turn that little child that I've drawn badly into a little child that looks cool. Okay, here we go. So that one's bad. That one is better. That one's bad. That one's a lot better. That one's kind of, I think that one's kind of nice. So we'll delete these guys. And I, I suppose another good thing about it is that it kept, it kept the original, right? It, it, it stayed very faithful to the original image. Uh, and you know what, let's make some more variations based on this one. And I'm gonna say a child staring at the sea on a windy beach, empty windy beach. Uh, we'll just say wind twice to really make sure that the network like pays attention to that. And then we'll go ahead and just do another generation. Same parameters. Okay, so this one's definitely, definitely, um, this one's definitely an improvement because it's got the nice shadow there. Delete the rest. And now we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna add an explicit requirement for the shadow. And we're actually just gonna give it a little bit more freedom. So we're gonna, we're gonna put denoising strength up to 35. And maybe the AI will surprise us. Cause it already surprised us by adding that nice little shadow. Maybe it can surprise us again and give us something that's like really cool that we haven't thought of. So definitely the shadow is playing more of a role, so that's nice. But that's not what we wanted. That one, also not really what we wanted. Yeah, okay. So giving it more freedom really didn't help us too much here. All of these look a bit strange and weird and unpleasant. So it looks like we've sort of come to a reasonable spot with the AI. We're gonna, a local, a local minima or a local maxima or something, or we're close to a local maxima, as a, an AI nerd might say. And so we're just gonna put the denoising strength even lower, and we're gonna make eight different generations. And all of these should be really similar to what we put in. And maybe one of them will just have like a little subtlety that's a bit nicer that we can use. None of these are really any good. And I'm sort of noticing it 
tends to, to be putting the child sideways. And I think that's due to the little scrap of white we have here. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to use my manual painting skills, which are not good. And at this point, you know, I'm sure you're aware, I could probably just be painting manually at this stage. So we're going to give the AI a little bit more freedom and we're going to generate some more. And hopefully this time they'll realize that the child is supposed to be facing towards the sea and they'll give us that. Okay, so none of these were any good either. Um, so I'm just going to delete them all. But here we have ended up with something that does look pretty reasonable. And I think this is probably where we'll have to leave it. So this is quite nice, in my opinion. It's certainly nicer than anything I could have drawn myself in you know, any amount of time. So just to sort of review what we've done here. Firstly, we started off with this blank canvas. We generated some images and we only kept the ones that we sort of liked and had the similar feel to what we liked. We then manually just drew some things and we drew them quite badly and in a very rough way, but we did use the existing illustration features. And then after that, we generated some more based on what we'd drawn and we ended up with this image here. And so the hope here is that by using traditional illustration along with AI, we can sort of get more intentional images rather than just sort of being at the mercy of the AI and hoping that the AI gives us what we want. A um, bunch of links below describing a lot of the things that we've done here, like the prompt. And I made this video because I couldn't really like find any examples online of someone going through a workflow of them from a blank canvas to a nice image. Um, so if there are any other examples that you know of that are similar to this, please link them because I want to know about them. And if you want to make one yourself and upload it, please link it to me because again, I, I think this is really interesting. This is like an emerging field. No one's done this before. I think the more we document the stuff that we're doing, uh, the better. So any links, send them to me. And other than that, have a good...